fire away. Are there some advantages to going in as a three seed this year as opposed to the one seed that you guys have had the last handful and maybe not the same target on your back that you've had? I mean, okay, that's certainly, I think, something that we'll try to take advantage of. I mean, obviously, they see, see these things for a reason. So theoretically, I mean, you end up playing a much more difficult opponent, uh, especially opening uh, round and, and even second round. But, you know, I've found that, yeah, they're, once you get into this thing, I mean, everybody's earned their way in some way, shape, or form, and it's always going to be a really, really difficult game. We've had very difficult games as a one seed, so I, I, I know about Grand Canyon. Uh, Bryce does a great job. I've been following him uh, for a while, you know, obviously because of my relationship with Scott, but also because Roger uh, Powell worked under Bryce, and, and, uh, uh, and then know Jerry Colangelo. I know Jerry Colangelo very, very well. Big part of the whole Grand Canyon uh, ropes of the not only the basketball program but the whole school, and uh, so that it's going to be a really really tough uh, first round matchup. Did you watch him last night? Rich? Watched a little bit of it last night. Was bouncing around, uh, uh, watching all a bunch of different games. Yeah. The talk most of the year has been it's more wide open. And as we got to the end of the year, they're saying there's six or seven teams maybe as a one seed. Buying that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it got to six or seven. I didn't. I heard that same comment. I'd be surprised. That. I, certainly, I think the way UCLA was playing down the stretch, I'm sure they were in consideration. And, um, um, and, you know, I don't. I don't know if anybody else. Was. What's it like seeing uh, Boise State at the bottom part of that bracket? Uh, seeing Leon, uh, a possibility down the road, but you know, that's, cool a, the same. that's a long ways. Down there, uh, uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, he, he's done an awesome job, and, and uh, you know, I think they've yet to win a game in the in the NCAA tournament. They got a great uh, 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 shot uh, this year, and, and uh, again, they've just uh, had another really, really, really solid year down there. Coach, can you talk a little bit about uh, not having to go, you know, all the way over to New York or something, and instead you just get to, over to Denver, and just for the fans, but also you yeah, know, for sure. No, I think that's one of the great, uh, you know, tweaks and changes that they've done. You know, with the NCAA tournament, is just a real effort, to, especially if you're a top four seed, to keep you somewhere close to your uh, or in some proximity to where you're at. You know, it was really screwed. Uh, up this year, when you look at a map uh, of the sites, it was crazy how, uh, I mean, even Denver is almost Midwest, you know, and, and uh, there, there weren't just any sites. They were all, when you see it actually on the map, it's, it's unbelievable how many are, you know, definitely on the eastern side of our country. So maybe there is something that East Coast buys. You guys played uh, 10 teams that ended up going to the tournament, including a number of one, two, three seeds. How do you think that non-conference and playing St. Mary's three times helps you guys here in the next few weeks? I mean, I think it, it, it has to help Theo. I mean, it just, yeah, we've, we've seen it all, basically, from, you know, Zach Eady to just the, the relentlessness and the pace of uh, Alabama. You know, the, the, the incredible physicality, intensity of Texas. Uh, so, I mean, we've seen a lot. How different, how much progress do you guys think you made for the group of this I think we've made a lot. I, I, you know, I was talking to the guys about that uh, today, is, as uh, I think B Mike brought up a, a stat, as only my analytic staff could. But, uh, um, uh, this is the lowest turnover rate we've had, I think, in the entire run we've had. And, you know, which surprised me because I know we've had some teams that didn't turn it over very well. But uh, I mean, that's what they were saying. And if you think about what our issues were back in November, it was turnovers. And so these guys really um, you know, heeded the warnings and, and listened to what we were saying and, and took the coaching and we've taken – Great care of the ball, you know, knock on wood, uh, uh, down the stretch here. And then I also think, I, I mean, I like, we're a lot tougher than we were. I mean, I think the young guys have gotten tougher and more physical and a little more gritty, definitely, than they were in November, January, or excuse me, November, December.
What about Nolan's growth at the point guard spot from the first day to you know last week? He's been really good. I think uh, he's one of those guys that has done a good job understanding taking care of the ball. You know, I think with Nolan, sometimes he gets a little too caught up in whether his shots dropping or not. We're just always trying to explain to him that there's just so much more to the game than just that. You know, there's especially at that position. You know, you're, you're kind of quarterback in the whole club. You know, we've really been after him defensively. I mean. I think that's where probably the, those young guards have made their biggest jump. Did you already get a text from Scott? Uh, uh, I have not looked yet on that, but uh, I'm sure it's not when we talked yesterday. So. How does yeah, it? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too bad no bubble. You could relive yeah, the bubble. Well, yeah, well, no, it's not too bad, no bubble. <laughs> no, I think we've all had enough of the of the bubble. <laughs> it's not it's not too bad. <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, and the Drew, I mean, awesome for their family. Their dad's a wonderful man. I'm sure, it would be great to have both, both those guys there. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting little uh, group. Hey, the, the one that nobody's talking about, TCU's really, really good. I mean, I watched them numerous times. Uh, and really athletic, and Jamie's got them playing a lot faster this year. And they went into Kansas and I think won by 25 or something. That. Kansas, and I think they've had to deal with a lot of different injuries and stuff. But when they're full strength, I, they are really something. How does Bryce compare in the pickleball court to his brother? Any? <laughs> uh, he never made it down there that whole uh, <laughs> week. Oh, he was he was out early, <laughs> so uh, he didn't get the full 30 days in the bubble like Scott and I did. Coach, can you talk a little bit about being in that West uh, region and seeing Kansas, seeing UCLA, just all the good teams in there? And I mean, it's just it's just like another non-conference run for you guys, almost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the most important thing is that's a long ways off. You know, I mean, you just have to you got to just survive in advance. We have to survive in advance with Grand Canyon, literally. And I think the seeds kind of mess with people's minds that aren't in our industry, and, and it's just not how it is, especially. And we talk about how crazy the year was in college basketball and just how amount of parity and how tough it is to get any kind of win. I mean, we experienced that in our league this year, right? And you just go through all of uh, Grand Canyon's games. I just did that before I came out here. Just every one of them was close. I mean, every single one of them looked like it was maybe one or two possession games. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's hard to get too into what's down the road in the bracket. And, but, uh you obviously watched UCLA last night. That was a heck of a game that Tommy in Arizona uh, pulled out. And I've, and I've got to see uh, uh, Bill's team a lot this year, too. I'm unbelievably impressed with the job he did, you know, with what, what they lost and get them all the way back to the number one seed. Does this day ever get old for you? No, it doesn't. It, do, it really doesn't because it just, I mean, I know, I mean, there were days I and mean, we walked out of the gym and, Heck, all the way back to the Tennessee exhibition or the Texas game, and you're like, you're, you know, there's some serious doubt creeping into whether the streak will stay alive, you know? Because I, I think that's confusing for all these Zag fans and people who have been around. You get, you, they, they come up to me and they say they can't wait till March Madness, and I'm like, well, you have to earn your way into March Madness, and we haven't earned our way in yet. And there's, I mean, there's, because of the job the, all the teams have done here, there's this incredible, almost spoiled attitude around here where you're just going to walk in and, and and win. It's just not how it goes. I mean, you got to fight and scratch and claw and, and survive, and whether it's injuries or, you know, just maybe guys not playing up to what, what we thought they were going to be or all of that. So uh, I think we experienced that a lot this year. And so I think that's what I told the guys in there. They should never, ever get to the point where they don't appreciate this team. Because it's, you know, what's happened at Gonzaga, you know, these 25 straight or whatever is, it's unbelievable. It's, it's as, as big a story as probably ever in the history of college basketball, if you ask me. So, uh, um, and as I told them, I, I stood in that locker room, you know, on this day three years ago, I had to explain to uh, Adam and Gilder and Ryan Woolridge who transferred here to play in this tournament that they couldn't play in it because it was getting shut down because of COVID. Uh, so, no, I never, ever, ever <laughs> take this for granted. Ever. All right.